Okay, welcome back. The third and last of our lessons. We're going to show you how to automate routine tasks. As I said an hour ago, this is the real reason the Unix shell has remained so popular. Yes, it's nice to be able to combine commands with pipes. Yes, it's nice to be able to use history to get a record of what you did. No, it's not nice to have to remember names like MV for rename, but we're stuck with it. The real reason the shell remains popular is that it gives you a way to automate things that you do over and over again. For example, here are the four data files that we created. I want to see how many times each species was, species was observed separately in each file. Now, I've already got in my history a command that will do it for one file. I can say grep get rid of species from uh, Steve, pipe to cut dash d comma dash f2, pipe to sort, pipe to unique dash c. This is the command we've built up. Your data processing pipelines will be more complicated. You'll have many more commands, many more options, parameters, values, intermediate files, but this is the basic idea. If I want to go back and do this for Jerry's data, I have to go and manually edit the previous command. I don't have to retype the whole thing. I just have to replace Steve with Jerry. But I still have to do it. And if I've got a thousand data files, I really don't want to be going up arrow, edit, enter 999 times. It would take a long time, and there's almost no chance at all that I'd get through it without making a mistake. So what can I do instead? Here's the first thing I can do. I can say for some variable, some arbitrary name, let's call it stuff. You could call it file name or data source or something more meaningful, but I'm just going to call it stuff in Steve and Jerry. Notice that the prompt has changed from a dollar sign to a greater than, meaning the command isn't completed. The shell is waiting for me to type some more stuff. I want the shell to do the following things. I want it to, I don't know, um, WC dollar stuff, and then done. Okay, what's this going to do? Well, what I've done is create a loop. A loop is a programming construct that does the same operation on many different things. Here, I start a loop by saying for, and then I say inside the loop, the name I'm going to use for the current thing is stuff. That can be any name at all. That could be uh, Fred. It could be the name of your cat. Please don't name it after your cat. It's not going to mean stuff. It doesn't mean anything to other people. But here I'm using the word stuff in, and then I give it a list of things that I want to do the loop for. In this case, I want to do it for two files. One's called steve2012.txt, the other's called jerry2012.txt. Then I say, here's what I want you to do. And that goes between the words do and done. In this case, there's only one command. I just want it to word count each file separately. And you can see that it does a word count on Steve, and then it does a word count on Jerry. How do I know it's working? Well, if I go back and change this, and do them in the reverse order, I should see the word count for Jerry and then the word count for Steve because a for loop does things in a particular order. It does them in the order in which you gave it the stuff to work on. Sure enough, the for loop is actually doing them in the order I said to. Now, this is how Unix puts a loop on a single line. You see the semicolons? It's for stuff in blah, 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 semicolon, do this, semicolon, done. This always confuses me. I always find myself putting the semicolon after the word do, which is why I would type it as for, and let's not call it stuff anymore, let's call it uh, data in Jerry and Steve, carriage return, do, um, and again, let's just do something like sort dollar data done. So the first time through this loop, 
data will have the value jerry2012.txt. So dollar data here will be expanded, it'll be replaced. So we'll actually be saying sort jerry2012.txt. Then we'll go around the loop again. Data will be given the value steve2012.txt because that's the next thing in the list of stuff we want to process. So dollar data is the expansion of the current value of data. It means replace the word data with whatever the current value of that variable is. Well, if data has the value steve2012.txt, then dollar data is steve2012.txt, so we'll sort that file. So it's a bit difficult to see here, but it actually is sorting. There's the first three lines from Jerry. The digits all become before the capital D. And there are the first few lines from Steve. Okay, so far not so interesting. But now let's say for data in Jerry and Steve do grep-v species from dollar data. Get rid of the species line from whichever file we're talking about right now. Remember, dollar data is the thing that data currently refers to. So the first time through the loop, we'll be doing grep-v species in the Jerry file. The second time through, we'll be doing grep-v species in the Steve file. So we do that, and we pipe that to cut on commas, give me field two, pipe that to sort, pipe that to unique dash C, and then we're done. Okay, I, th I, th I think this output is right, but it's kind of hard to tell because it's all been blurred together. Let's try this again. I can't tell where the data from Jerry stops and where the data from Steve starts. So let's say for data in Jerry and Steve do graph the species echo dollar data. Echo is a command that just prints its arguments. So if you say echo one, two, three, it prints one, two, three. If you say echo hello there, it prints hello there. If you say echo jerry2012.txt, it prints jerry2012.txt. Not the contents of the file, that's Kat's job. Echo actually prints jerry-2012.txt. Well, if data is pointing at the current file, then dollar $data is the file name. So echo dollar $data will print the name of the file. And now, grep the species, pipe to cut, pipe to sort, pipe to unique dash C, and done. So what's happening here? Well, here's our loop. Data is the variable that's keeping track of where we are in the loop. And we're going to do the body of the loop, the stuff between do and done, once for Jerry and once for Steve. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to echo, print, the, the value of the variable data. So that's going to be the current file name. And that's why we get Jerry2012 there and Steve2012 there. And then we're going to do this series of commands that we've seen now several times to find out how often each thing occurs. So what we're getting is a title line telling me what file and then the observations from that file the next title line, and the observations from there. Now, if I want to do this for all four of my data files, I could go up arrow. As you can see, it's wrapped around, it's kind of complicated, but I could go in and start typing in carla2011.txt, carla2012.txt. I could explicitly list all my data files. But that's the wrong way to do it. Again, think about what happens if you've got 100 data files. Typing all of the names, you're going to make mistakes. Reading it, if I've got 100 data files here in the command line, you're going to lose sight of what the actual command is. So what if I say, for data in star.txt, do, just print the data file name. Star.txt is a pattern that matches all of my data files. So when I say for data in star.txt, star.txt gets replaced by whatever that pattern matches, and that's the names of my four data files. And then the loop goes and says, give each one of those names to the variable data one after another. Okay, I'm good with that. Here, I'm just printing the names, but I could equally well say for data in star.txt, do echo dollar data, 
And then, once again, here's our friend, grep-v species, pipe to cut, comma, pipe to field to, pipe to sort, pipe to unique dash C, done. Except this is wrong, because I haven't said grep-v species in data. There's no file name there. So when I try to run this, what happens? It hangs up. The very first time through the loop, the value of data is the name carla2011.txt. So we echo that. That's good. We see it. But then we run grep without any file names. Well, if you run a command without any file names, it thinks it's supposed to read from a previous stage of a pipe. But we haven't given this command any previous stage of a pipe. It's the first command. So it's trying to read from something that's not there. So it's just hung up. Right? The reason cut and sort and unique know to read from the previous stage of a pipe is that they haven't been given file names. So if we forget the file name on the very first command, it's trying to read from something that isn't there. It's just sitting there twiddling its thumbs. So we type control C. That's control and C together to kill the command. And now we go back and say for data in star.txt do echo dollar data grep dash v species pipe to cut dash d comma dash f2 pipe to sort pipe to unique dash c done. Oh no, I've made the same mistake again. I forgot to say grep dash v species dollar data. Okay, at this point, you should realize that I'm doing something very badly wrong. If I'm typing in these commands over and over again, I'm repeating work. And anything I repeat will eventually be wrong. Never mind the fact that it's tedious, that it's wasting time, that it's causing strain on my wrists. Eventually I'll get it wrong. What I want to do is take this and stick it someplace so that I can reuse a complex series of commands. I want to create new commands. Well, it turns out the shell's very good at that. Let's take, let's take our pipeline. Let's history pipe to grep for grep. Wow, that's a lot of output. But it looks like the last time I got this right was command 218. So, history, pipe to grep for 218, and put that in uh, count.shell. By convention, .sh means a file contains some commands for the shell to execute. So now when we go in and edit that file, as you can see, the command itself got added to history, so when we grep for 218, that matches itself. We'll get rid of that line. We'll go up here, and we will say grep v species in star.txt, pipe to cut, pipe to sort, pipe to unique. Okay. Save it and exit. Clear the screen. We've now got four data files. They're the things that match star.txt. And we've got one shell command file that matches star.sh. Again, this is why we use regular names for our files. All of my data files end in .txt so that if I want to process all the data files, I just do something on star.txt. All of my commands are going to be in files that end in .sh for shell so that they're easy to spot, find, move around, and so forth. We cat count.shell. It's grepping everything that isn't species from all my data files, doing a cut, doing a sort, doing a unique. So I say bash, because that's the name of our shell. We're running the bash shell. I want you to run count.shell. Woohoo! What just happened? What happened was the shell went and ran the commands that are stored in that file. That's kind of useful.